if we could just launch off into this kind of discussion about the Clickitat Ape Cat, uh, and we can talk about other things as well. But um, because one thing for sure, uh, in the email that was sent over to me, the portal idea, I was like, oh yeah, yep, got to talk about that too. <laughs> so uh, if we could though, start off with the Clickitat Ape Cat because you know this was something that I had never heard of before. And it's just very fascinating. And the fact that you have so many reports is even even more wild. It's not just a one-off. Yeah. yeah so just a little bit of background. Um, we're, uh, my store is located in Bingen, Washington, which is in Klickitat County. And um, it's named after the Klickitat Indians. Um, and we have a big river that flows off of Mount Adams called the Klickitat River. Um, so that's where the that name comes from. But um, yeah, so this was not long after we had started this paranormal reporting. Um, you know, we put up the sign and did everything else. And it was close to closing time. And a guy came in the store and um, his family and Margie, Margie's my mother-in-law, were pretty, uh, she had helped him out. She was a, uh, she had a medical background and their family had some issues and she was able to help them out. And so there was a little bit of a family connection with this guy. I'd never met him before. It took him about 45 minutes to work up the courage to tell me his story. Um, and once he finally launched into it, I was just fascinated by what he was saying. So he was orienteering. Uh, that's, you know, uh, practicing with a map and compass out in the wilderness areas. And um, it was about uh, maybe three, four miles from the store. Uh, it's a tributary of the White Salmon River, which also flows off Mount Adams, um, called Buck Creek. And um, he noticed that his compass started acting strange. Now, that by itself is not entirely uncommon. When you look at the navigation maps of the gorge, there are bright pink letters on them. Uh, and the government says, warning, your compass readings will be off in this area. And there's a lot of magnetic anomalies here. So that's an interesting data point. And he continues. And he said, uh, not long after that incident with the compass, he looked up and across the creek was this enormous very muscular black cat with a long black tail. And he said that it stood four to five feet tall at the shoulder. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wow, uh, this is a pretty remarkable tail. Of course, we have cougars out here, um, but cougars typically are not going to get much bigger than 24, 26 inches at the shoulder. And uh, cougars are never supposed to be black. Um, you know, when cougar expresses its melanin, it goes from tan to a reddish color. And uh, since this report, we've talked to wildlife experts and they say, yeah, there's no such thing as black cougars. They're just not a thing. Um, they're not recognized by science, at least. Um, so this coloration is a strange piece. The size is a strange piece. Those are two flags telling me we've got something going on here. He continues to describe this animal. Um, and he says, and he watched it for about five minutes and it looked right at him. So here's another anomalous data point. Um, cougars will abandon a fresh kill at the sound of human voices. And for a, a big cat to remain in his presence and not be spooked by him, it's another big clue that we're not dealing with a cougar. He said that the fur was four to five inches long and it stood straight out from its body. Um, okay, so again, not sounding like a cougar to me. And then he finally worked up the courage and said, and, and James, the strangest thing is that it had a face that looked like a monkey. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what does, what does that mean? And, you know, I pressed him for details. He said that it had intelligent ape-like eyes and some other primate features. There's a few of the details of his story that I always keep um, quiet so that I can check other people's stories and see if they're matching up. But basically um, that was my first ever um, report of this thing we came to call the click attack ape cat. I was completely fascinated, you know, uh, for me, and this is my own personal assessment. The guy was genuinely reporting an experience that he had had, right? So, um, there's a number of ways that you can tell when people are telling tall tales. And, you know, when we started this project, we expected folks to come in and have some fun with us and, you know, tell some, um, uh, more playful tales. turns out, not many people actually do. Most of the people that come in they genuinely have had some kind of unusual experience. Uh, and they're very thankful that we have a place where that's a, where it's a safe place to tell those stories. Um, and so I was just amazed. And I thought, this is really, uh, I had never heard of anything like this before, just like you. 
and I was excited. And so uh, the next morning, I was talking to my staff about it, and um, uh, I was describing the creature and describing the incident. And one of my employees, uh, as she heard the story, started shaking, very clearly emotionally impacted by the story. Now, the thing you have to understand about Missy is that she is um, as honest as the day is long. She is the kind of person that even feels guilty about playing practical jokes on her coworkers because that's kind of like lying and she's kind of not into that. Um, and here she was standing before me listening to this story and I could tell that she was having a genuine emotional response to it. I said, Missy, what's going on? She says, oh my God, James, I've seen that creature myself. Um, it was dawn and she was driving to work down Klickitat Canyon. So like I said, there are two main rivers that flow off the glaciers of Mount Adams. One is the White Salmon River, which is where the first um, encounter was reported. And then Missy's encounter is off the Klickitat River, um, which is on sort of the eastern side of, of the store, about 10 minutes away from where we are. And uh, she said that she saw this really big black cat with a long black tail walking near the side of the road. Uh, she was so astonished by it that she pulled her car over and watched it. She said that it walked into a small patch of tall grass and then she never saw it again. And she wondered if she should get out of her car and talk to the people who lived in the houses nearby to say, hey, there's this giant black predator prowling around near your home. And she figured out, they think, oh, crazy. And so she, she never did that. Uh, she did get out of her car and do a little investigation. Didn't, didn't find any, any real clues. She told her family about it. And they all kind of laughed nervously. Um, they told her that she had probably seen a cow. Now, <laughs> there's a couple things about that. I mean, first of all, we all have this instinctive reaction when we hear stuff that we've never heard of before to normalize it. Like you, you life is hard enough. You don't need giant black cats prowling around your neighborhood. And so, um, but this happens a lot with folks um, is that they'll hear a story and they'll make a snap decision this is what it is. It's something that I know. It's nothing unusual. And that way they can sort of reset, keep the world the way it is for them. And, and people do that to themselves. Like they'll have an extraordinary encounter and then they'll talk themselves out of it. So Messi's family told him that it wasn't a cat. It was probably a cow. And just on its face, like this is a grown woman. It'd be like if you were <laughs> in town and you saw someone drive by in a red Lamborghini and uh, you told your friends, hey, I saw a red Lamborghini. And they said, nah, Lamborghinis are pretty rare. What you probably saw is a red minivan. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's just ridiculous. Um, so after the response of her family, she decided she wasn't going to tell anyone about it. And so it had been a couple of years and she'd been holding the secret inside of her and she didn't know what to do with this information. And when uh, she heard someone else had had a similar experience, um, it was an enormous, like cathartic event for her. Right. And so to me, Missy's account is a hundred percent credible and, you know, uh, other people can have their own opinions about it. But, um, in my mind, there's no question that she was being genuine and honest in her report. Unfortunately, she didn't get a look at its face. So she didn't, the, um, ape like, uh, face structure wasn't a part of her report. So from that point, I thought, wow, this is a full-on Scooby-Doo mystery. Um, let's see what we can do to, to figure out more about it. And um, so, you know, the store has a radio advertising budget, and the gorge is a pretty rural area. There's maybe, I don't know, half a dozen, six to eight towns here, 70 to 80,000 people live here. So it's not a enormously densely populated area. And uh, radio is still a pretty effective way to advertise. And so we put up ads on the radio that said, has anyone else seen a giant black cat crawling around Cricketack County? And I put up uh, flyers at the trailheads and asked people to come into the store and file any reports. And since then, we've had over 70 reports. Um, and so we've had senior law enforcement officials uh, tell us that they've seen the animal. Um, and lots of credible folks uh, have come in. And um, so the reports go back 30 to 40 years. And uh, so 
when you look at the lifespan of like a tiger or a cougar, uh, they really max out at 15 years, many times much younger than that. So we're talking about um, something that seems to either have a particularly long life or is reproducing. One report, a gentleman said that he saw it in his driveway and it had a cub with it. So it had a young new, um, like a kitten, uh, basically a black, same black coloration. Um, and so that's leading me to believe that we have a reproducing population of these creatures out here. Um, you know, we've had, uh, so of those 70 or so reports, um, about half of them explicitly describe an enormous size that four to five feet tall at the shoulder size. Um, so that's bigger than a tiger, which is the largest living cat on the planet right now. Uh, I did a little research. There is only one animal in the fossil record that matches anything near that size. And it uh, is an ice age American lion. Uh, scientific name is the Panthera atrox. And these creatures were estimated to be uh, between 1,000 and 1,200 pounds. Um, and interestingly, they had the largest brain capacity of any cat that's ever existed. Um, so uh, the fossil record is pretty solid. Uh, 80 specimens were found in the La Brea tar pits. Um, they were definitely, Washington State was within their range. But, you know, according to science, they died out, you know, 9,000, 10,000 years ago. Uh, sort of at the end of the Younger Dryas time frame. Uh, so that sort of um, was my initiation into this. And, you know, as we're going along, um, so like I said, about half of the reports say that it's got this enormous size. Everyone says that it's very muscular looking. And then a handful of reports, and it's not more than 10, say that it's got these monkey-like features on the face. And, you know, you have to understand you know, my process has been, you know, these reports come walking through the door and um, people now stop me in the street or in the grocery store or at the post office and tell me their stories. And I'll get my mind around the fact, well, you know, maybe the monkey thing was just a strange trick of light or some kind of weird, you know, observational issue. And then I'll get another really strong report. I got a report from um, a fire crew chief. So these were folks that were fighting wildland forest fires up between Mount Adams and Mount St. Helens. They said the whole crew saw this thing on the first day of a three-day outing, and they were worried about what they would do if it ever showed up in their camp. And they were very explicit about that monkey-like face. Now, their description was a little more helpful. They said that uh, it had a flattened snout. So like, if you can imagine the difference between like a German shepherd and a pug dog, same kind of animal, but one's face is just doesn't have that longer snout. And so in my mind, like it could be some kind of mutant um, or it could be something else. There's some really interesting explanations where it may come from. You know, we've got some native American stories. There are some possibilities that it has to do with extraterrestrial beings, um, which is a kind of an interesting story. And I think one of the most interesting leads that we have is that it may have escaped from the Hanford nuclear site, which is uh, just up river from Klickadat County. So this was part of the Manhattan Project. And during the Cold War, they had this enormous animal testing program. And so there's a pretty solid case to be made that it may have escaped from one of their um, experiments. <laughs> 